And so our last speaker is Marilyn uh, Gittinger. I'm hoping I pronounced that right because I didn't didn't check it uh, specifically, but um, she uh, earned her PhD in chemistry from the University of Texas. And then before retiring, she worked for companies in the areas of pharmaceutical analysis and environmental testing, where she served as the compliance officer and operations officer. Um, so after she was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, she joined the Michigan Parkinson's Foundation uh, and then became a research advocate with the, Park the Parkinson's Disease Foundation, the PDF. Uh, which actually is now merged with the National Parkinson Foundation. Uh, and so she really now works to further research in Parkinson's disease uh, through communication with the Parkinson's disease community. And uh, I thought it was, would be helpful to get a patient perspective on research in Parkinson's. So let's welcome her. I'm Marilyn Gittinger, and I was diagnosed seven years ago with Parkinson's disease. Before retiring, I worked in the areas of pharmaceutical analysis and environmental testing. I guess it was natural that I would be interested in the research associated with Parkinson's disease. I bring you a patient's perspective of Parkinson's disease research and some of the things that you as a person with Parkinson's can do to help move this research along. I am keenly interested in Parkinson's research being carried out today, not only for my emotion, my potential benefit, but more likely for the benefit of my children and their generation. Currently, there is no cure for Parkinson's although as we've heard today, there is promising research being carried out. Those of us who are living with Parkinson's can help move Parkinson's research forward. Let's start with drug development. It takes a long time to go from a research idea to a usable drug. For a new drug to be approved by the FDA for use, it must go through an extensive process which may take 12 or more years and millions of dollars. Twelve years is a long time to wait for a drug that could provide needed relief. We need to speed up the process and there are things that we can do to accomplish this. An important part of the approval process for new drugs are the clinical trials. There are three phases to the clinical trial part of the FDA approval process. Phase one involves a small number of healthy or target people, for instance, 10, and determines the safety of the drug. Phase two involves target subjects in the hundreds to measure safety, preliminary effectiveness, and side effects. Phase three involves many, again hundreds, of target subjects to measure effectiveness and safety and determine the risk-benefit relationship. As you can see, phases two and three require a large number of research subjects. After approval, there may be a phase four post-approval study to further demonstrate safety and any other factors of interest. Volunteering for a clinical trial is one, of the, one way you can help move Parkinson's disease forward. To quote James Beck of the Parkinson's Foundation, participation in clinical trials is critical to finding better therapies. A key roadblock to new therapies in the Parkinson's community is the dearth of people living with Parkinson's who are participating in clinical trials. Now listen to this. It has been estimated that there are more than 60% of clinical trials which fail, not because of lack of money, but because of lack of research participation, research participants. 
This is very disappointing. As a volunteer in a clinical study, you can help find new medications and therapies for Parkinson's. Many people don't believe, realize the medications they take today are available only because many people volunteer to participate in the clinical studies. Soon after I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, I saw an advertisement in the newspaper for people with Parkinson's to volunteer for a clinical trial. I called for information, learned I met the criteria for the trial, and determined there were clinical sites which were running the trial near me. That happened to be U of M and MSU. I signed up. It was one of the best things that could have happened to me as a newly diagnosed person with Parkinson's. After joining the clinical trial, I received frequent monitoring and medical attention that improved my understanding of Parkinson's and how it specifically affects me. This was a big help to me as a newly diagnosed Parkinson's patient. I must add, when it comes to volunteering, I put my money where my mouth is. I have been in 14 clinical trials and research studies. and have signed up to donate my brain to the Michigan Brain Bank. I support research in any way I can. My fellow people with Parkinson's can help change the future of the disease by participating in clinical trials. And let me add, there's a special need for minority representation. If you want to know, what clinical trials are currently enrolling participants? Here are two websites I can recommend. Clinicaltrials.gov, put together by the NIH, and foxtrialfinder.michaeljfox.org, put together by the Michael J. Fox Foundation. Both allow one to search by disease, symptom, or location. Clinical trial volunteering is not the only area in which people with Parkinson's can help move research forward. In 2008, the Parkinson's Disease Foundation, now the Parkinson's Foundation, started an important program whose main goal is to solve, treat, and end Parkinson's disease. Called Parkinson's Advocates in Research, or PAIR, P-A-I-R. The advocates have the responsibility, that is the responsibility, to work with researchers to bring about better treatments for Parkinson's at a faster pace. This is done by one, helping to set research priorities, two, partnering with research professionals, and three, educating the community about Parkinson's research, like today. You may ask, how could someone like me help set research priorities? One example is through research grants chosen by research advocates and awarded by the Parkinson's Foundation. For instance, in the previous two years, the symptoms of fatigue, dystonia, gastrointestinal dysfunction and cognition were chosen by the research advocates for study. The foundation organized four conferences with experts in the chosen symptoms from across the world. They assessed where we are today in treatment of these symptoms and what needs to be done to, involve the, to move the field forward. After the conferences were held, the Parkinson Foundation designated half a million dollars in additional grant money for scientists studying these four symptoms. The second thing was partnering with researchers. 
allows the research advocate to have the unique and critical perspective of those afflicted with Parkinson's to the researcher. After all, we the people with Parkinson's and our caregivers are the experts on what it is like to live with Parkinson's. Our input on study design, study recruitment, and patient retention can help clinical studies get done faster. People with Parkinson's can provide input at the relative, on the relative amount of research dollars allotted for a cure in the future versus money allocated for symptomatic treatment to improve quality of life today. A reason for researchers to listen to the input from more than one person with Parkinson's is that each individual is different. Even the descriptions and experience of quality of life is different from person to person and day to day. I have a saying, with Parkinson's, every day is a new experience. Would you agree? Educating the community involves understanding and evaluating scientific information to share with the community. Areas of research priorities include One, disease-focused research that will show, stop, cure, or prevent the disease. An example of promising disease-slowing research is the phase three clinical trial for, the Innes for inosine being carried out currently at 60 research sites across the country, including Dr. Chu's lab. When inosine is metabolized to uric acid and the urate level in the body increases, it has been shown that higher urate levels correlate with future incidences of Parkinson's and with slower progression of the disease for those already diagnosed. Now that's pretty exciting, at least should be to all of us. Symptomatic treatment. Symptoms which may be good candidates for study include fatigue, as mentioned above, and which, by the way, is the most often cited symptom in disability claims. Another is sleep, which we've heard a lot of about today lack of which is most often cited with poor quality of measurement. Number three, development of new and better biomarkers. Biomarkers may be diagnostic, predictive, or used to track the progression of disease. For example, biomarkers that give early and accurate diagnosis of Parkinson's disease would allow people to get the treatment they need early in the progression of the disease. Dr. Mueller's work is a good example of biomarker research. I hope this has given you an idea of how I view the research side of Parkinson's disease. I very much believe there is a role for the Parkinson's patient to play in research, and I encourage you to look into it for yourself. Thank you. Any, any questions? Over here. Why are there not more uh, signs or requests in the clinic? Uh, indicating the trials uh, need people? So the question is why aren't there any more signs uh, or postings in the clinic regarding, uh, regarding the trials? Um, one, of the, one of the reasons uh, is that in order to post signs, it has to actually be approved by the Institutional Review Board. Uh, and so some, um, some actually Th there are postings that get approved and get put in the clinic. Uh, some they're, they're not. Um, number two is uh, our, sometimes our clinics are not 
just for Parkinson's disease or for neurology. There, it's a clinic that's shared by a lot of different providers, uh, and the clinic doesn't uh, want to have something that's necessarily particularly for one and not applicable to all. Uh, patients who are going through the studies. And third, really, um, uh, it's, it's our job, I think, as uh, clinicians to let you know about uh, a lot of the trials that you might qualify for, especially. And so, at least in our Parkinson's disease clinic, we try to be very good about identifying patients who would be uh, qualified uh, or who, who meet the criteria to participate in our studies. Marilyn, very nice talk. Uh, would you, or are you able to remember and share any information about any of the 14 studies that you participated in? Um, well, why don't you come in and speak? Um, I, I was in the phase two study for inosine, which is the one I told you about that Dr. Chu has going currently. Um, I'm doing two studies with Dr. Mueller and one with Dr. Bonin, um, and several of the um, research studies were uh, sit in front of a computer and see how quickly you can answer a question on and off your medicine. Okay. Well, as Marilyn's caregiver and husband, I urge all of you to get involved in this. They did. The fact that there <coughs> aren't enough uh, pe people willing to participate in the studies is really discouraging. And she's gone to various places, and we're going uh, next week to Portland, Oregon, to the, what is it, the World Conference. Uh, she's been at the National Institutes of Health in Washington, D.C. They paid for a trip to D.C. I mean, you get some things out of this, too. So I encourage all of you to get involved in this to help, help these scientists solve this problem. I'll volunteer. For, I'll volunteer for your project. If you accept me. I'm volunteering. Volunteering if you accept it. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to answer that? Yeah. I so thank you for volunteering. Um, there, uh, if you have actually, so any of you, if you're interested in volunteering in any projects, uh, I would suggest you go to the clinicaltrials.gov website or the Fox Trial Finder. Um, all of the trials or studies or projects that we do at U of M are actually listed uh, in there. Uh, and you can find it. And you can actually look at the criteria to see whether or not you qualify. Because some of them are basic. Some of them are only looking at specific things. Um, there's actually another website that you can go to. Uh, it's, it's actually changed. Um, uh, it's U of M, it's a UM, capital U, capital M, health research studies.org. Used to be UM clinical studies.org, but they changed it. So you can go there, and those are actually any trial that's going on at the University of Michigan, and you can sort it by disease state um, uh, or, or condition uh, or, or a different criteria, and you can maybe find one that you might qualify for. UM Health Research Studies dot org, O-R-G.